Was it, uh, is it UFC heavyweight Greg Hardy, or is it like internationally acclaimed music recording artist uh, Greg Hardy? You got the, the, the budding music career these days? You could just call me Prince. <laughs> Prince, fair enough. Are you, are you getting into music now? Is this something else? I mean, NFL and MMA wasn't enough? I've been doing music for about 20 years, man. I think I, got, I, had, uh, I dropped one when I was with the Cowboys. I dropped one before that. And now that I am a part of the lovely UFC, who does not care what I do as long as I represent the wonderful brand in the right way, I'm able to express myself freely like Americans should be able to. Awesome. I got a discography to catch up on then. Uh, let's talk about the last one. Obviously, things didn't go your way there. Kind of a frustrating result. What, what lessons? I know you're you know, kind of learning at this game on the job. So, you know, what lessons did you, did you take out of that one? That one was an on-the-job lesson for sure, man. Um, dude, I think uh, I have been hearing that some people think that I'm a quitter. That is crazy. You guys have seen me in uh, what's a full crucifix, my first fight. Did I quit then? 22 days notice, I go to Russia. I fight that guy for three rounds. Did I quit then? I'm talking busted face. You know, and over and over again, Jorgen DeCastro, I got kicked like 20 something times. I could barely walk. Did I quit then? You know, so on and so forth. So for me, I think I gotta just keep in mind the lessons are gonna keep coming and that's exactly what it was, man. I, I got on the ground, I stuffed a bunch of takedowns after whooping his behind. He did not want to stand up anymore. His game plan was take a bunch of punches, which is a wonderful game plan, <laughs> and then take me down when I got tired, which I did. And, you know, I had to figure it out from there. And that's something that I, I, I couldn't figure out fast enough. Yeah. So I took some time and I uh, got back in the lab, man, you know, like a, like a young man supposed to. Yeah. It's funny you, you would say that I've been hearing people say that I'm a quitter. People have said a lot of things about you, sir. Uh, I mean, is that the one that sticks with you the most? Is that you're a quitter? It hurt me. I'm, I'm the Kraken. I'm the Prince of War, baby. When have I ever quit on you? Anybody in this room, you know I got you. I show up, I show out. You got to put me out. The ref's going to stop it. I'm not going to tap. So you took seven months. I know you're a guy that would probably fight every week if they'd let you. Was that on purpose? Did you take some time and say, hey, let's, let's step away? Because you'd been trying to rattle off fights. Was that a conscious decision to say, let's step away a little bit and let's, let's work on the game? Once you're tied for the most active heavyweight in the world, you kind of get the, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it was 100% on purpose, man. Like I, like I was saying, when, once I hit the ground, it was a problem of solving the uh, situation, solving the problem. And I couldn't do that. And that was an issue for me. And um, throughout my career, even when I was in that crucifix, I knew the answer. I just had to get to it. And when I couldn't get it to, get to it last fight fast enough, I knew that moment I was like, yo, it's time to take a break. It's time to go back to the lab and find the answers. You know, there's something that we missed. So they come to you with this matchup after that, right? It sounds like you're talking about, like, technically improving and getting smarter, but then they put you in a guy that's just probably going to stand and brawl with you, right? Like, this is, this is like, it seems like it's going to be like an old-school heavyweight fight. So what did you think when this was the matchup they presented with you? I asked for it, man. I called him out. I was like, let's do it, you know? Because, I mean, honestly, this is a business, and in a business, you got to have that turnaround fight. And, and I feel like, in my, from my perspective, I was thinking about myself, for one, and secondly, the fans, man. All right. We've had one where we're going to challenge Greg Hardy. We're going to see what he can do. I failed. Happens. I knew that this was going to be my journey from the beginning. It was going to be a little bit rougher than everybody else's. And now it's time to entertain these guys. It's time to come back with the full. And at the end of the day, what guy haven't you seen come in there and try to take me down? Everybody talks like he's going to knock me out. Greg Hardy's a villain. I'm going to put his face on the pavement and bounce it off of it and blah, blah, blah. And then they go shoe, surfing for shoelaces, just nose diving. So I still think it's going to be up in the air fight. And I mean, I talked to some guys earlier and I was like, I'm here to be a mixed martial artist, man. So I am approaching this fight ready for whatever. But I took it knowing that I'm here to entertain, man. And we need to get back to that real quick before I go chase this gold. Then you feel like Ty is the guy that will deliver on that? Because I don't, I don't see him shooting a lot of takedowns. I'm praying for it. You know my style. Let's bleed. Look, if he thinks that I'm scared, let's meet in the middle. And we'll see who quits or who dies. And I'm down for, e for either. Nice. Last thing for me. What are you hoping to accomplish here? I mean, I know you want to win. Like you said, you always say you're going to put on a show. But do you feel like you're in there to, like, show some growth or show some kind of, like, technical advancement in your game? Or is it just for who? I feel like I've given you a lot, right? I feel like generosity-wise, man, I've given you my heart, my soul. 
I've improved every single fight. And now, man, it's for me. I'm living the dream out here, dude. <laughs> I just got done playing on a Pro Bowl, and now I'm about to fight on my second Conor McGregor card. <laughs> this is, I'm having the time of my life. This fight is, is one I needed. You know, win, lose, or draw. I'm about to go out there and put on the show. I'm going to give you everything that I got, and if it's not enough, we're going back to the lab, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough. Great. Yes, sir. It's a crazy answer. I'm ahead of schedule, but it's not enough. What are the, what are the um, touch points that you use to mark? Like, are there, you know, things that you point to that say, this is why I'm ahead? Growth. Uh, diversity in my um, ability to manage my martial art archive. I have all these things that I've been learning over the years and months of grueling practices. And when I get into the octagon, my ability to call upon them, use them, meticulously in the right time is how I gauge that. And um, last fight, I showed a lot of growth, you know, from just a fight before it. Um, managing my systems was not one of those <laughs> places of growth. So I would, I would say that's the thing that, you know, makes it not enough. There is so much more to go. But as far as being a three-year, being in three years of learning how to throw a punch, learning what an underhook was, we're so far ahead of schedule, man. You know, when, when you came in, the expectations were so high on you because of what you had done in the past, right? You know, Pro Bowl, NFL player, and, you know, such a, uh, an elite athlete. But, you know, what, what advice do you give to others that look at this? You know, it, do you ha is patience the number one thing? Because, you know, it, it, no matter how great you are at basketball or football, it's a different thing when you're standing there in your underwear with a guy trying to punch your head off. Patience and managing your expectations. It is uh, very hard to live in this world when people love, like my man said, they, they love to talk about me. And it makes me want to be so much better and go so much harder, so much faster. But you really do have to take your time. You really do have to take your lumps. And you really do have to understand that this is a process. And you need to go through that process if you want longevity. You know, you know um, of the guys you beat, I don't think anybody you beat is still in the UFC. So I don't know if you're beating them so bad, you're knocking, you're knocking them out, right? But uh, the, the guy, and then they're putting, it seems like you're getting different kinds of opponents. Volkov, you know, a really elite guy that you're facing, albeit on short notice. And then guys that are, you know, maybe UFC debuting. Uh, do you want to get more on a consistent basis where everybody you're fighting is on that level and that, you know, you're fighting guys that are, you know, in the top 10 or 15 and, and, and not just, you know, this up and down that you've had? Managing expectations. Two fights ago, we were just talking about, hey, is Greg Hardy uh, still in the league? Is he going to fight somebody that's good? Is he going to? And two fights before that was, well, Greg Hardy's not fighting anybody. He's fighting trash cans. And two fights before that, it was, can Greg Hardy fight? So I just feel like, man, it's been a short run since, what, not this last January or last whenever it was. Two Januaries ago when we were walking into New York and everybody was like, why are we letting this guy fight? You know, I'm ex like I said, I'm exactly where I need to be, man. And it really isn't up and down. I'm fighting people that have better records than me, that have more experience than me, that have more ring time than me, that have fought weaker opponents than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm overcoming. I'm the underdog in every one of these situations. <laughs> and, and last thing for me, uh, Greg, or Prince, I guess I should say. Please and thank you. You know, you got it. Um, you know, Dana said we, there was a fighter, I can't remember who it was, but a fairly prominent fighter that got cut a couple weeks ago, and he was saying when you can't win a championship, I'm looking for guys that can, I believe can win a championship. The fact that you're still here, what, three years later after you came in, that, does that say something to you that they believe you can still become the UFC heavyweight champion? And do you feel that that is in your future? I feel like those guys see that uh, I'm here to work, that uh, I'm articulate, I'm awesome. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity, man. And I'm going to make the most of it. You know, some guys, they go out there and they don't make the most of it. And when, even if they do sometimes, the business end of it doesn't allow you to do that. And I've, uh, I feel like I've maximized on both ends. And, if my, and when my time comes, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to go away. Still going to chase that gold. So I wouldn't say that it's, I'm here because they know that I'm here to chase the gold. I think I'm here because I'm qualified as hell. <laughs> Greg, right. What's up, uh, brother? Are you still training with Rashad? Yes, sir. Uh, what do you make of his uh, coming out of retirement, calling for that Logan Paul fight? Bro, he's going to beat the crap out of He's been practicing with me, man. I've been at 320 up four, four months ago. He's been wrestling a 320-pound savage and beating my behind <laughs> 
for about six months, man. Like, there's there's no doubt in my mind that he would destroy John Jones right now, brother. But um, I think it's amazing. I think that, yo, wow, who says we got to quit? Like, I'm so happy to be out of the NFL where once you're 28 years old, you're trash. You know? And then, uh, I know you've said uh, you've, you've eyed a career in boxing after this. Lately, we've seen these massive paydays. Even for bare-knuckle boxing, we've seen all these celebrity crossovers into the boxing world. Are you seeing that payday, and are you still looking for that after the, your MMA career? We don't care about the payday, brother. We here. I'm getting paid, trust me. <laughs> I don't show up unless I'm getting paid. Um, but first of all, we're not eyeing anything. We're going to boxing. Hopefully, you know, the big man is going to help me do it, and maybe I get to knock out a Sean Merriman or Ocho Cinco, one of those fake heavyweights that don't really want to play this game with me. But it's very serious. I'm, I'm coming for Deontay. Just like in this league, man, I'm coming for Deontay Wilder. I'm coming. Did you see that video of him lifting weights? Yes. Oh, my God. That guy can beat me, and he can't take me down? Okay. I'm coming for all of them, bro. This league, that league, and I don't want to choose. We're going to do, we're going to, if I could fight Volkov and then go fight the Bronze Bomber and then come back and fight Cyril and then come back and fight Fat, 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 Fat Lewis, I'd do it. I am going to do it. So, so two questions. What do you make, who do you? One more fat, fat. <laughs> what do you, who do you like in the Fury Wilder and who do you like in Gone, Derek Lewis? Fury Wilder. 